What is up y'all? Welcome back. Today we're talking about Skin by Kim. I know, right? Everybody has their feelings about the Kardashians and the Jenners and what have you. I am more curious than not curious. That is where I land on this. And so I ended up picking up the Classic Matte Eyeshadow Palette. Y'all did get to see a first impression of this in a previous video. So some of y'all know how I feel. And I got one of the lip liners and one of the lipsticks. A lot of this stuff was sold out when I got there. So I don't even remember what shades I got, but I think that they match. I think I got nude six, yeah, in both, we'll see. And I'm going to use this as an opportunity to put together a face of makeup that really showcases highlight and contour. We're gonna try and stay in the mattes as much as possible until I kind of editorialize a little bit of color here and there. I think that this is a really great kind of teaching moment of how to work with cool and warm and it's definitely something that people have asked me to do in the past. I'm going to show y'all a lot of my favorite contouring products that I use that give a really believable look that looks good in person. So if you're just here for the Skin by Kim review, there will be timestamps. You can absolutely skip ahead. But if you are just here for the beer, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff today. So let's go ahead and jump in. And if you think that I am not starting with the Janessa Myricks, the new Moisture Repair Balm Serum, well, you are miscalculating because this is my new favorite thing. I put this on again last night just as like a skincare product and I was very, very impressed with it yet again. So if you didn't see my review of this, it's basically a like a barrier repair kind of slugging layer, but you can use it under makeup. And I find that like a little goes a long way, but a lot also goes a long way. Something really beautiful to that. Oh, <laughs> elephant in the room. I got a haircut recently and I'm just super annoyed by it because she cut way too much off and I really miss my length. And so I'm wearing one weft of extensions today for just the fact that I'm over it. Like I'm just over my hair not doing what I want it to do because it's too stinking short. I'm like really ticked off. I'm not letting anybody cut my hair anymore. I'm cutting my own from now on. <laughs> That's how I feel about that. I have the Prada Reveal Foundation here in LN5 and that's what I'm gonna use today. This is an extraordinarily versatile and lightweight texture of a product. Has a really great amount of coverage and LN5 also just happens to be a really seamless shade match for me. And I just think that it's going to be a really good base, especially with that nice moisture underneath it from the Janessa Myricks Balm for demonstrating the power of creating some illusions with shadow and light that again, look good in person. I hear a lot of people just being really afraid or just wholesale against the idea of contour in general because they're like, you're always going to end up with that dirt stripe on your face. It never looks real. It's only for professionals. I also hear people kind of confusing the idea of contour and bronzer as if they're mutually exclusive. Like I don't like contour, I only use bronzer or like I'm more of a contour person than a bronzer person. They're completely different things. I'm gonna turn this light down. Kind of made me reflective, didn't it? They're completely different things and I'm going to demonstrate that for you. But first we're going to go in with some concealer. And again, we're staying right in my like skin tone range. I am not a person who necessarily uses like a super, super contrasty base product in order to achieve shadow and light. I'm gonna do it with like subtle washes of color, cream or powder after the complexion products. But my only objective with my complexion product color wise is to just match my complexion. It's like too many moving parts. And that is what can really Really look artificial in person is if you know your foundation doesn't match your body like that that's going to be really clockable in person so i would say that like step one as far as i'm concerned is making sure that your complexion products are not trying to like make any huge leaps from your natural skin tone i think a really good way to demo this is with cream products so i have all of my salt new york palettes here <laughs> one of them has to have what i'm looking for in it right this is salt new york sculpt and bronze cream tint pro in taupe so this is a fantastic example of a really functional contour for my skin tone. But as you can see, that is cool. It is taupe. It is kind of leaning gray. Then we have something like the bronzer that I like to use, the cream bronzer that is kind of my winter shade. This is the Persona bronzer in Mojave. They're very similar in their saturation value, but one is warm and one is cool. What happens when you put something warm up against something cool is that it's going to create the illusion of a more exaggerated shadow and depth. So the cool tone recedes from the eye. It looks like it's farther away from you. And the relatively warmer tone, even though this is pretty neutral, it's still relatively warm compared to the contour. It's gonna look like your cheeks are coming towards you. It's like a plumping effect kind of. That's the difference between bronzer and contour. It's not like you have to pick one. So I'm gonna put them on and I'll, and I'll see. This is a nice visual demonstration, you know? I usually see Kiki do this with a sponge. So let's go in with a sponge. You can use any tool with the Cream Tint Pro. I really don't think that it matters that much, but I 
actually learned most of my contouring skills for my face. You know, I know how to paint, but for my face, I learned from one of Kiki's videos. If you're unfamiliar with Kiki Galloway, Kiki G Makeup here on YouTube, she is one of my good friends and she is the creator of the line Salt New York. And she also is a you know professional makeup artist for TV and film and has created a lot of, I mean, her videos are more unhinged than mine. Hello, my friends. Welcome to today's video. Today, I want you to get ready with me and I wanna talk about the patriarchy. Move my bangs out of the way. So I have hair now. I mean, I always had hair. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember this or have seen it and me talking about it, but during the pandemic, I went on a really strict diet of exclusively gushers. <laughs> I only stopped because my doctor was like, don't <laughs> do that. Which are, it's just fantastic. She's always been one of my favorite creators to watch, but super educational, just really, really helpful content on how to do makeup in a way that again, looks good in person, looks believable. So contour, no contour. Now granted my lighting's a little different because my hair light is over there. So no contour, contour, they are very, similar, okay? This is an illusion that we are building that is, again, supposed to be subtle enough in person that no one is clocking a dirt stripe. So I basically, like, if you were to take, whoa, that's a light fixture. Let's not do that. So like, we turn off my light, we turn on my phone light, right? And you shine it down until it starts to kind of create shadow. Look at that. That's where you contour. It's basically everywhere that like shadow is being naturally created. That's where you're going to, I mean, obviously you're not going to color in all of those lines, but like those are kind of the visual guides for where shadow is naturally created on your face. We're not trying to draw on a new face here. I'm trying to make this approachable and easy. If you want to draw on a new jawline, good luck. Good luck. I can't teach you how to do that. So I'm going to put the bronzer on this side as well and leave this side blank so that we can see the difference, right? The power of makeup. So again, we have Mojave. Mojave is going to be relatively, relatively warm by comparison. It is not the warmest bronzer. Just because you want something to be warmer than your contour, that doesn't mean that if you are a fair skinned, cool toned kind of person that you have to go and buy an orange bronzer. You know, not everything is made for everybody and warm is not the same on everybody. We're talking about warm versus what's next to it, which could be your contour, could be your complexion product, could be your skin tone. And like, I change my bronzers all the time. I have several bronzers. <laughs> but it's like always an adjustment based on whatever's next to it, either my eye look or my blush or whatever. So looks like it's coming towards us relatively versus this being a little bit more flat. And this looks a little bit more sunken by comparison. And this looks just a little bit more flat. I mean, yes, I do have cheekbones like I do, but I do think that the effect is, well, the effect is effective. Uh, the English language is just not on my side today. So on top of something like this, because I've created something pretty neutral, it's all pretty like what I say is skin native. You're not talking about things that are like really large standard deviations from your natural complexion tone. That is a really safe place to start from for any look. Let's do the other side and I will show you again where I contour. So I'm using the contour again and where I contour is from kind of the vanishing point right there of my ear all the way down to where that contour naturally ends. I'm not pulling it all the way down here. I'm not doing any TikTok crap of like drawing diagrams on my face and then blending it. And I'm also not a huge fan, especially from a beginner standpoint of drawing anything, especially contour directly onto my face because I will forget where I put it and I will walk around the whole rest of the day with unblended contour. I will do that. It'll just be under my nose or under my lip and it's just like <sighs> recipe for embarrassment. So the next place that I do it, and this is just my own, my own thing. And that is because I feel like I have a pretty tall forehead and I also have kind of a sparse hairline. So I fill in a little bit with the contour and then I also use it here. So right in that shadow of that crease and up my temple, because that's also another spot that shadow naturally exists. Make sure if you're getting old like me, you know, you double check close to the mirror. I'm a little nearsighted. And then anywhere 
problems. Like as soon as your eye starts to recognize those natural shadows, you'll be like, oh, I see, I see a lot of them, you know? And it's like, okay, well, I'm gonna work a little contour, just a little bit, whatever's left on my sponge, underneath the tip of my nose, a little underneath the lip, a little underneath the chin, all places where shadow already exists. And it's so little product, just so little product. Like you would be shocked at how little product there actually is that I'm working with. It's not, again, the old days of YouTube where we are just trying to pan our products in three uses the way that we used to. So you can see contour, no bronzer, contour, bronzer, and then our little bit of bronzer here. And I am blending it onto and into the contour. The most seamlessness you can get is what's going to make things look the most natural and believable in real life. A little bit of bronze on the nose because bronze is technically, you're, tr you're trying to simulate being in the sun. The sun comes this way, shadows come this way. That's a really good way to think about it actually. Sun, there, dark, there. Bronzer goes where the sun goes. Contour goes where the dark goes, <laughs> the shadow. So a little bit of bronzer on the forehead. Again, because you're kind of obeying the slope of your forehead, it's like depth, slope. Now, some people might ask like, where does highlight fall into this, right? Because highlight, I think back in the old days of YouTube, we were thinking of it as something that was like almost like eyeshadow or like glitter shimmer on the top of your cheekbones. I always was kind of anti-highlighter in that sense, because as soon as you put something that's that reflective right there, it actually it distorts the view of that part of your face and makes it look like your blush doesn't exist. Like the light hits it, it just blanks it out. And since then I have found highlighters that are easier to use in that respect. I find that actually, you know, using something that is a slightly cooler tone, sure, but like more skin toned, not like silver white, something closer to your skin tone is going to make a big difference. So I have here the Givenchy Prism Libre highlight. Is this necessary? No. I just wanted to kind of demonstrate the use of highlighter within this context because yes, we can still kind of simulate the light hitting in a flattering way, but if you use something that's a little closer to your skin tone, then it can give that effect without being very obvious as highlighter. It's just really chill. And all of these are really great kind of hybrid finishes. They are creams, but I feel like they all dried at least, on, at least on me and my super dry skin, my skin just goes like soaks up all the moisture and they all go to a powder finish anyway. So, you know, what do you want? Another thing that I feel like is really important to mention is the difference in texture as far as how that is going to affect the way that your complexion is like perceived, right? You look at my face and all that work that I've just done, what kind of sticks out? The shiny spots, right? You want to not have your eye drawn to that, or at least I want my eye to not be drawn to that. So I will take a smaller powder brush like this. This is the Nikki LaRose BK N15. Use something really translucent. I mean, it does have a little bit of pigment to it, but this is a very, very lightweight powder from Kosas. And use that, and you see, it's almost in like the Kim Kardashian spot where we used to draw the triangle, you know? But it's just on the top of the cheekbones and underneath the eyes like that. And then your eye will get trained for the spots that are kind of attracting attention. It's usually your T-zone in ways that, you know, we used to bake these areas some people do again, but like, it's not about lightening them. It's about just taking the shine down so that the rest of what you have worked on is the focal point. That I feel like is basic training, right? Of contour versus bronze, cool versus warm, shadow versus light, how to use color theory to create the illusion that like your skin looks better, your skin looks healthier, but it still looks like you. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into the Skin by Kim products now. So we're gonna start with the Classic Matte Eyeshadow Palette. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch all these. I'm gonna roll my sleeve up here. I wanna compare it to the other like all matte neutrals palettes that I have in my collection. Not every single shade, but more just discussing the finer points of the formulas because there are some very obvious comparisons that I feel like need to be made here. <laughs> It's 12 shades. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of shades. And I swatched them in the weirdest order ever. <laughs> I went like up the columns instead of down the rows. Although I feel like that's kind of intuitive because like it does go like light to dark on, no, 
No, I, I did, I, I kind of did it wrong. But either way, those are the shades. And if you missed my video where I did the first impression of this, I will go ahead and spoil it. I'm very impressed with these formulas so far. And that's why I think that they're relevant to compare to other things that I've liked in the past. Starting with the obvious, which is Makeup by Mario, okay? I pulled two Makeup by Mario palettes out because he did change his mattes between the original releases and Ethereal Eyes. So I have both here. I am not sure if I ever actually owned. I want to say I did the all matte palette palette from him, but like I can't seem to locate it. I must have gotten overzealous at some point with my decluttering, but I will say I prefer the old formula of Makeup by Mario's mattes because they were just grippier. They had like more of a primary feeling to them, whereas Ethereal Eyes, I mean, they're, they're nice. They really are. They're very velvety, but they're very different. They're just fluffier. You know, it doesn't have as much kind of natural cling to it. And I also noticed that because of that, look at that, how much more pigmented, how much more consistent pigmented they are. I've said this a million times, I'll say it again. How something swatches does not translate to quality. This being something that swatches more evenly does not necessarily mean it's an easier or better formula to use. I do still prefer the old formula, but I think Etherealize is just like an incredible concept. I think it's just a beautiful freaking palette. I love it so much that like I can get past the fact that like the mattes are my second favorite, you know, of his releases. Okay, so next we have the Patrick Ta Original Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette, and I don't have his all matte palette, but like why would I need to? I have plenty of his mattes right here. So I find these to be really similar to the new Makeup by Mario formula. They have that same hyper soft, very consistent kind of pigment to them that I feel like is a little bit more difficult to work with for me me or for beginners. I just find that anything with like this much pigment in it tends to run away on fair skin. It might be really, really incredible on like medium and deep skin tones because you get more color impact more quickly, but I prefer something that builds a little bit more slowly. And both of these, I mean, they are remarkably similar formulas. Next we have the Danessa Myricks Groundwork Palette, the Defining Neutrals Palette. And oddly, the powder mattes are actually the little guys over here. This has a smell to it, like a very specific smell. It's not unpleasant, but it's like a very specific specific kind of almost like a fragrance, but either way. Going to touch into these. Now I like the putties a lot in this because they really feel like almost like melted down eyeshadow sticks. And for that reason, I feel like this palette has something unique to offer, but the putties, that's a putty right there, are even lighter in pigmentation than the powders. And so the like everything about this palette builds more slowly, which is really lovely. Like that's why I like it so much. You just end up with, I mean, I'm not sure that it's 100% necessary. I've said that this palette isn't for everybody, but it's really intuitive for me. Look at the similarity in the choices that they made here. This is 12 shades and this is only 10 shades. Nonetheless, we are almost shade for shade on this. It's very comparable. So I think that that's why I kind of like both of them is because they play so well into the very intuitive balance of cool and warm. And then finally, the weirdest $40 anybody might spend. This is the Kosa's Undressed palette, something we're all trying to forget. You know, not only was this kind of a flop of an idea in general, but this formula is kind of neither here nor there. Like it's fine. It's fine, but for a $40 palette, I felt that it was nothing to write home about. And I also am very just like perplexed by the one shimmer in here. Make it an all mattes palette or put a shimmer in there that's not so decidedly warm. Like it's just such a strange set of decisions. So I don't recommend that one and especially for the price. Out of all of these, I would compare the Skin by Kim formula most closely, I think, to the newer version of the Makeup by Mario, but I feel like it's less pigmented. So so it's got the same finish to it, but the fact that they're a little bit lower in pigment, I feel like makes them just so much easier to use. So I think the intuitive thing to do here would be to start with, you know, a transition shade, and that's gonna be something that's just neutral. You're gonna start in with something neutral, and essentially it's just to create the backdrop of the eye look. This is a very similar color to the bronzer that I used. It's just right there in neutral skin tone territory for me. This is reminding me immediately of how much I enjoyed working with it the first time, how much I enjoy working with it now. Good grief, that is just so easy. Like ridiculously easy. It's stupid, like it's 
it's a phenomenal formula. Like it's just so easy. All right, next I'm going in with a refer brush, which is actually a natural bristle brush. And so we'll see if that makes any difference here with the application, because a lot of times that means it'll pick up more products, but this is the refer 14. And what I want to do now is go in with my warm tone on my lid. Like that's a warm tone by comparison. That's a warm tone, but that's a really, you know, but we're going to go with like the lightest one here, which is a little yellow by comparison. But bear in mind that this, anything you put on your lid is also going to kind of appear as your local color. But now you can see that the transition shade starts to look cool by comparison. And I will also take that shade and I'll work it kind of above because again, it's warm. So it's going to build this illusion. Now granted, we're, I'm, I'm exaggerating this for demonstration purposes and I will be able to go in and kind of like soften it but I just wanted to show how using these contrasting tones is going to create the most effective illusion on your eyes. It's like, it doesn't have to be the most believable illusion. If it was, I would be using like these really, really light colors, you know? So actually I will, I'll go in with like the gray and that's the coolest, fairest tone in there. And that's what I'm gonna use to build a really nice believable crease. I always like to build a little bit more of a crease than I have. See? It's gonna kind of pull out a little bit wide, elongate my slightly close set eyes, make them look a little bit bigger. And then you have options, right? Like this really neutral brown right here is a great opportunity to blend from that crease shade that's deeper onto the lid, which is kind of yellow, in a way that makes the transition a little bit less contrasty, a little bit less stark. We can take a bigger brush into like this one right here and soften the transition between the crease color and the rest of the eye look. And then you always have the ability, right, to go in with the lightest shade. I'm doing this on the weirdest brushes, I know, but that's how you're gonna pull it back on the rails, right? kind of hem in everything because I'm just using that to add highlight in my inner corner and up on my brow bone that makes everything just look a little bit more intentional and then take whatever's left on my brush and just kind of blur everything together. I'm adding a little bit more of the gray right there. I feel like there is no hiding behind anything in an all matte palette. Like it's a bold move. Put out an all matte palette as your first release because it's like, it's either good or it's not. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of that same kind of yellowy color, go underneath my eyes. It's a little bit kind of warm olive for me, but I feel like as the most extreme color, it's working okay. Use another one of kind of the like light neutral colors out here on the outer corner underneath. And you can build even more depth than this, obviously. Like I could go into these deeper shades. Like this is a very, very cool gray right here. Hello, hi, new lens, calm down. Just calm down, okay? Let's see what happens when I do that. It, this might be a disaster, but it's like, you put it right there in the center of that shadow and really just pull even more depth into it. And that cool tone has the power to create such an effective shadow illusion. But the higher contrast you get against your own skin, the more you're going to want to lean on things that are more skin native to blend the edges. So it's like you go in with a little bit of something a little lighter blur those edges. You can't always rely on something high contrast to just blend seamlessly into your skin. You need to kind of fill in the gaps. I'm just using a brush without anything on it to just pull everything together a little bit because we did layer a lot of colors on top of each other. But I mean, for me not being necessarily the world's best makeup artist, right? And also for this being an entirely matte look at the moment, the formulas are really performing. They're really, really performing. And before we start kind of editorializing, like making real decisions on color, I wanna do one more thing and that is contour my lips. This is the Robin Beauty Love Balm in Soul Kiss and it is this translucent kind of cool mauve color and I use it underneath a lot of my lip looks to contour like the corners of my lips like that it truly looks just like depth. Use it right there on the bottom. And that's on top of nothing right now. And it automatically creates the cool toned illusion, right, of shadow so that it looks like your lips are a little plumper. Now, do I look kind of like a crypt keeper at the moment? Yes. What we have done is we have basically created all of the like soft contours and taken all the detail out. And so now we're gonna just kind of put the healthy color back in and bring the details back in, basically like focus 
the camera lens and put the saturation back in, essentially. So since I'm wearing something blue, you know that that means that anything kind of pinky coral is going to pop really beautifully. In fact, they just announced today that the House Labs blushes are coming back. I'm not sure if they're going to be the exact same formula, but if they're not, then I'm sure they're going to be an improvement on the formula. So I am excited about that and I can finally talk about these again. So this is Pomelo Peach, one of my favorite shades from last year. And I'm going to just touch that here. And you see, this is not contour and highlight. This is not trying to create shadow and light or any kind of illusion other than the fact that I like this color and I want my cheeks to be that color. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Yeah, I hope it's the same formula. I think that they just repackaged it. I'm not sure, but they also came out with a couple more colors and I will be buying them. You know that I will. Now that we have the blush on, this is when I start kind of having to fill in the gaps because I don't love when there's like this stark contrast, this big leap between the color underneath my eyes and my cheeks. And so that's when I will take something like that same brush I used for my powder go in with something that has this like kind of neutrally warm, very close to my skin tone type color. This is the Victoria Beckham light bronzer that I always use. And it's just going to help bridge the gap. It's just like right in between. See? Make everything look a little bit more at home. And you can use something like that to do that anywhere on your face, you know? And I do kind of want to grab a color like that and put it in my eye look just a little bit. So oh, what I wish I could find is YSL confident nude because it's like the perfect corally pink weird color but in lieu of that I found blaze from hourglass which is just a really lovely copper color and I'm going to use that ever so slightly although it does pack a punch on the lid and it's going to just kind of pull that nice warmth out of my cheeks just a little bit of texture and it's like we didn't lose any of the detail that we worked so hard on with the Skin by Kim palette, but this is just kind of like editorializing on top of it, deciding what you want it to look like. Take a little bit of it on a little flat brush, go underneath, just in the center. I don't want it to be too wild. Okay, I'm gonna do brows and my eyeliner and my mascara. And then we're gonna come back and talk about the Skin by Kim lips that I don't even really know what color I got. So that should be a fun surprise for all of us. in like the best way possible to me, the way that he always works in like really soft, thin layers of makeup. And I feel like it always ends up really looking seamless. That's kind of what I'm channeling today. So let's open up these. Again, I got these in Nude 06. I think that this entire order was $100 between all of these products. So Nude 6, cute. Ooh. Now, if the lipstick is that color, which I think that it is, yeah, I think that that's gonna be a little too much, but that's okay, because we're doing it. How is that Nude 6 and that's Nude 6? Really? Huh, those are two very different colors, which is fine. In fact, it's a pretty good example of what we've been doing today because they went cooler and deeper on the lip liner contour and a little bit warmer, sheerer, a little bit lighter on the lip color. So maybe, she is thinking like me. I don't know. Let's try it. Also, I should talk about the component. This is really lovely. The eyeshadow palette is like, eh, neither here nor there. It kind of feels like a, you know, a heavier ColourPop palette because it has cardboard on the outside and she's chosen this, you know, olive gray color. But this is metal right here, which is kind of cool. And I don't know, the component is, it's kind of nice. It's not unpleasing. And then this is just a pencil. It's a nice formula. It's a little bit waxy, a little bit grippy. I like it. But if you've heard me talk about this in the past, I am not difficult to please with a lip liner. I can pretty much get along with anything as long as it's not awful. Mainly about the color for me. Pretty, pretty. Get a little blend going. All right, and here we go with the lipstick. Woo, she's warm. That is so warm. Mm, I mean, it works. No fragrance, nothing and it's matte. Yeah, matte lip. It says that. Yeah, it's a little bit more kind of peachy 
like a much like a matte deep peach but still it's got a little bit more peach to it than the lip liner does not a color that i necessarily would like go for as my first choice but it doesn't not work comfortable formula no taste no smell easy to apply i also this is like it's smaller but this is typically like my favorite shape for a bullet i like when it's just kind of round and you know soft it doesn't need to be all the filigree and like diamond shaped and whatever like i don't need all that i mean the longer i wear it the more i like it it's definitely a vibe it's definitely a vibe okay i'm glad we went with blaze on my eyes i'm glad we went with this blush because i feel like it goes really well with the lip regular fix plus i mean i think this went well this is a look that looks very very good in person it looks really lightweight yes i'm wearing makeup but there's nothing cakey happening here i really enjoy the way that it turned out it's super comfortable and i really just used a lot of products that are incredibly lightweight intentionally and they happen to be a lot of my favorite products anyway so that's probably why. If there's one perk to this job is that when I have my choice about which product to use, I always know the one that's going to work the best. So that's the look. As you can see, as far as like contour, bronze, or all of that is concerned, we're just really trying to focus on something really natural looking. I think anyone can do this. I think anyone can get away with it. It doesn't have to be this like gatekeeping bar for entry on like how to make contour work for you, or like you have to choose between bronzer and contour. Like, no. <laughs> they serve different purposes. Purposes. I think that they can be for everyone. They can be for every day. I don't feel like I'm super made up, like that I'm gonna go out and do things now. So other than that, let's talk about my thoughts on the Skin by Kim release. As far as the lips are concerned, I think that really what we're talking about here is the formulas because they have a ton of nude lip shades. They're just kind of sold out. So this was what I ended up with. And I'm not mad about it. It's actually a very interesting choice <laughs> for a nude for me. I don't have anything this color that has this kind of funky, slight peachiness to it, but it's also really flattering. Like somehow it still has like a coolness to it that like a brown to it that's making my teeth look really white. I mean, I have veneers. They always kind of look white, but like still it's just very, very flattering in a way that I was not expecting at all when I cranked the bullet up. I was like, that's going to be way too warm. It actually works really, really well. It's a very comfortable formula. And like if you're already making the order and you're wondering if they're good, they're not bad at all. Like, I'm definitely going to continue using this lip liner because I like the color a lot, but like, this is unique to my collection and there is something to be said for that. And then, it always kind of makes a statement that I find anything like this super appealing, worthy of like a really glowing review because is the packaging stimulating? No, and I'm a packaging girly. Is the concept stimulating? Oh, and I love a concept, okay? But the fact is, drilled down to the absolute basics of what a palette like this needs to be, it needs to be very easy to use, it needs to be complete in the execution, and the colors need to work in synergy with each other as far as temperature is concerned, and it really hits all the marks. I mean, there are so few things that this is like, that has one job, you know, but like, that really makes the stakes high, because if it failed at that, it would just be a dud instantly, and it is one of the easiest matte formulas that I have ever used, so I'm just really, really pleased with this. This is the kind of palette that makes me believe in a palette again, versus using a bunch of eyeshadow sticks, which is what I have been doing more more lately or you know picking out singles and things like that but like this is something that I would very much travel with because it actually makes my routine easier which goes a long way for me so I feel like if you just came here for the Skin by Kim review you only needed about five minutes of this video but it's also there's not that much to say about it it's just good and they're basic colors you know she did a good job <laughs> that's the bottom line I think that they're good and that's not just me being like wow that's fine you know I just went to the drugstore and bought something it's ColourPop that's fine it's like no I I have a lot of makeup and I've tried a lot of makeup and like, those are good formulas. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this, please do give the video a thumbs up. If you're new here and you enjoyed this and you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing while you're here. This is a lot of what we do. We get in the weeds with color theory. We play with a lot of new products and compare them to what already exists on the market to help you make your best buying decisions with your next beauty budget dollar. If that sounds good to you, subscribe while you're here. I will put a video up here that I think you will enjoy. If you liked this one, thank you for being here. I love y'all so much and I'll see you in the next one.